Hello, and welcome once again to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Today, we have a ghost story. A story to chill the spine. A story to make you sleep with the light on. But before we start, let us relax. Let us leave behind the trappings of modern life and let's lose ourselves in the time between times, the time when it was neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. For now is our time to gather round the fireplace. Far away we can hear the howl of wolves, we can hear the growl of bears, but we know we are safe here at the time between times, the time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin. So thin that for just a few moments, you can reach into their world. And for a few moments, they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time that people see fairies or the tower with Tig. So sit back, relax, clear your mind of all your worries and your strife, and join me here at the Time Between Times as I tell you the chilling tale of the captain's wife. Many years ago in the village of Sully on the coast of Wales overlooking the Bristol Channel, there lived a captain called Mostyn Reynolds in a great manor house overlooking a cliff overlooking the sea, overlooking the Bristol Channel. There in a house windswept but grisly beautiful, he lived his life with his wife Helen. He embarked on many journeys all over the world, buying, selling, trading, bringing. And she grew lonely and wanted to embark with him on his ship, the White Shell, on a journey to faraway India. At last he relented and bade her to travel with him. They embarked from Bristol and sailed all the way south to the Cape of Good Hope. There, windswept and battered, they made their way there to India, where they spent a year living together in the sun before returning home. On the return journey, tragedy was to strike. For then, a great storm tossed the white shell up and down, back and forth, backwards and forwards, breaking a mast. As the sailors struggled to control the tempest, Helen was struck by the mast's fall, knocking her on the head. She staggered back to her cabin and there collapsed and died. Mostyn Reynolds was devastated, but knew that should any body be kept on board, ill luck would befall the ship. So he took a lead-lined box, hid it in his cabin, and hid Helen's body within. He pretended to the sailor she had taken to her bed, and bade no one enter the cabin. He kept up this pretense until the ship docked once again in Bristol, and Helen was unloaded in a box and taken back to Sully. There, stricken with grief, he brought her back to the manor house, walked her into the great hall, and lay her in state. He summoned a great ornate coffin to be built. But one night, having drunk too much, he staggered around the hallway until he came to the body within the coffin. Helen had been dead for some time, and her beauty had faded as her skin started to moulder and rot. Not being able to look at his wife or bear to see her in such a sight, the drunken captain took the box upon a cart out into the forest and there he buried her, hoping to hide the body until his eight ornate coffin returned. But he staggered around drunk and fell to the ground. In the morning he awoke covered in dew and staggered around once more until he returned home to the manor house. The next day, the coffin was delivered. 
carved from the finest oak. Gold all around it, with Helen's name embossed upon the front. The captain was bittersweet but happy. That evening he went out into the forest to dig up Helen's box and bring her back. But he could not find her. He looked until the dawn broke, but could not find the place he had buried her. In his drunken state, he had gone somewhere and could not remember. He looked here, he looked there, he looked everywhere, but could not find her. The days turned to weeks, the weeks turned to months. The months turned to a whole year, and still Helen's body could not be found. Until the captain, driven mad by grief, threw himself from a cliff down into the Bristol Ocean. And his body floated far out to sea. But there in the manor house in Sully, a lady is often seen walking on the stairs. A lady is often seen walking in the great hall. A lady is often seen walking out the front door and out to the forest. Many have seen her. Back in 1982, a young family came across a well deep in the forest. And as they looked down, looking for water far below, a shadow seemed to pass in front of them. And as they turned around, they saw a young woman in the forest just looking at them from a distance. She turned and walked away. With courage unbound, they decided to follow her. And she returned to the manor house in Sully walking straight through the wall into the house. Nearly 20 years ago, the well was found in the forest and it was dug up in order for stables to be built there. And as they dug deep into the well, far underneath they found a room big enough to turn a horse and a cart. And there in that room, was a box and in that box there was a skeleton of a woman her legs curled up to her chest and a gold necklace around her skeletal neck she was buried not far away but still it is said that on nights like tonight at the time between times the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. A ghost can be seen wandering from the manor house out to the forest, to the where the well once stood. Searching, looking for its remains which are no longer there. And that, my friends, is the sad, creepy tale of the captain's wife. As the nights start to grow darker, the ghost stories will come again. As the nights grow colder, our fire will need to be stoked higher for you to join me at the time between times. That tale was especially for Margaret Boriello. Thank you for your support, Margaret. I hope you are well. A ghost story for you. For all you others who are joining me here, whether it be old or new, who join us at the Time Between Times, please now look for I Have an Audio Podcast. Wherever you find your podcasts, please look there under Time Between Times and you will find these tales told in a longer format. Tales where I could tell you at my own pace without you having to be distracted by my face. Until next time, my friends, take care, stay safe, Leave some time every day to forget about your cares and your worries and join me at the Time Between Times. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon again for more tales from the legends of Wales and beyond. Diolch amawr, hwylfawr.